Hello, so it's been quite a while since I took, um, posted a video, um, it's not necessarily been busy, there's been a couple of times, a few times when I could have done it, but I like to film myself in privacy and I haven't really had any space to, for it to be private, to put it that way, and uh, it seems that way again as the door's just blown open, uh, but anyway, I'm sort of got some privacy now so I thought I'd just do a video sort of summarising where I am at the moment. So um, I'm 36 days into the keto diet challenge. It's a 60 day challenge. I um, haven't really managed to fat fast. I've managed to do it for two or three days most and not really noticed anything. Um, it's quite challenging at the moment to um, to follow the diet because I've well I'm not really seeing it as a diet I'm viewing it as a lifestyle you know it's something I want to do for life I do believe it's very beneficial for me and my body responds really well to this way of eating uh, however I've just started working four days a week which um, following my ME recovery um, continuous recovery as it were I'm still trying to heal myself heal my body in a lot of ways uh, means that it's quite challenging because I'm not really a morning person and I start half eight in the morning so I'm literally rolling out of bed and taking myself into work now um, I was I'd cut out milk and because I love tea and I'd cut out tea and it's not lasted. I enjoy my tea too much. Um, also, what I was noticing is I'm definitely sensitive to caffeine. I'm quite reliant on caffeine. Now, I have explained in a couple of other videos that um, I have issues with sleep, which are totally unrelated to caffeine. You know, I've uh, gone caffeine free before and what have you but for some reason I just seem to um, have responded a bit more this time I think because of the stress that I've been through the deterioration in my health since the last time I did it and probably getting a bit older and things like that yeah so basically um, when I was cutting out caffeine I was getting the most horrendous headaches I wasn't able to see function like uh, it was really having a big impact and I just thought well you know what actually I've just got this job it's taken me a long time to get there I really need to focus on that at the moment and the um, going caffeine free thing will just have to wait um, I mean not everybody's going to agree with me on that I'm sure that there'll be you know anyone that might happen to be watching this might come back at me and say oh no the best thing is to give it up well you know I've got to prioritize things and that's just not my priority right now uh so anyway it's, it was a good you know good learning experience good thing to learn um so yeah I'm drinking tea with milk the coconut milk I just wasn't getting on with it um I've also discovered I'm sensitive to dairy, so cream, normal cream, although I like that isn't really an option, having too much of that leaves me upset. Um, I say lactose sensitive rather than intolerant because I can eat it, I do eat it, it's just I end up with basically really smelly farts after eating dairy, that's obviously my gut isn't very happy with dairy. Uh, so that's that. Uh, we've also discovered I'm sensitive to nuts. Now it's been pretty easy really with the nut thing. I've just, yeah, I've just stopped eating nuts and nut based things, which has been pretty easy. I don't read all the food labels in detail, but, um, so there's probably a few nut sources that I'm having and, but I haven't really noticed anything. So I don't think I'm, you know, highly sensitive to them. Uh, I read food labels for sugar and, it's just, I've said this before, it's a minefield with added sugars and things, sauces and what have you. Um, generally speaking, I will stick with homemade, but like tonight, uh, just tired. So I did have um, some salmon teriyaki and the sauce came from a jar, so there was added sugar in it. However, it wasn't 
relatively wasn't that much when I worked out how much I was having and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm still working on it. So I've been on this keto diet challenge for 36 days. Um, I have started off really strict but had a few wobbles because of life and things like that. Um, but what I have noticed is, is like definitely since going keto, my health is so much better. I have actually started to be able to jog, uh, going jogging, running again, um, sprinting, and I'm running probably like five miles when I go and I'm doing steady state. And then I'm doing the high intensity interval training, doing 20 minutes of that. I'm I'm literally doing something um, every day, uh, a couple of days, what I would call active rest, I sort of go horse riding or do yoga and stuff like that, but yeah, I'm literally, I'm coming home from work, and although I am definitely pretty tired, um, I am getting myself out exercising, which is a really big thing for me, because 18 months ago, I could barely walk down the road without feeling like I was just going to collapse or something. So it's a really big step in the right direction for me to go from barely being able to walk down the road to actually going jogging for like 45 minutes uh, without stopping. Um, that's really quite something. Uh, my strength, the gains in my strength since I've tried the 5x5 five five programme... Um, I've, the last deadlift I did uh, was 70 kilograms, uh, squats were 60 kilograms, so uh, that's deadlift above body weight, um, that was one of my goals, is to be able to lift above my body weight, uh, squats nearly at body weight, body weight's about sort of 63 kilograms at the moment, so just under. Um, speaking of weight, um, that hasn't changed on the scale at all, actually. There's been no changes there. Um, something I have noticed is that naturally, whatever exercise I do, I naturally am more or less hungry and will eat to compensate that. Now, I haven't been trying to resist the hunger that I'm feeling. I've been very, um, anti trying to force myself to eat less if I'm hungry because that just is a strategy that doesn't work long term um so my body's obviously still got this natural regulation for the weight but what has changed is um not necessarily like my measurements they're pretty similar but at my actual body shape where um I'm storing fat muscle and everything does feel um in a lot better shape there is a better shape to my body so I have had to buy smaller clothes in some instances not because I've got any smaller necessarily but because I have changed shape so that is something that I think is really important to bear in mind um so I'll just kind of show you quickly you can sort of compare it to the first video where I showed you um I think noticeably um there's definitely more muscle tone on my legs um and around my my um bum as well uh my arms are more toned um i'm definitely slimmer sort of across my uh clavicles uh collarbone that area um and my waist seems to have slimmed down sort of around my back that that all seem, area all seems to have kind of changed shape a little bit. So for, well, my personal record and anyone that's interested, this is kind of what it looks like when you've not lost any weight, but you've been doing some serious exercise, weightlifting, uh, jogging, uh, horse riding, yoga, you know, a whole range of exercise on a, a nearly daily basis, like quite committed. So, um, yeah, I'll just shut the door and show you that. So, 
oh, if I can actually get my phone to do what I want it to do. So, sort of top of my legs, and I can move around here. So this whole area, um, knocking things off my legs are pretty toned and solid really um, yeah I think you know there's definitely quite a bit more shape to them than there was last time I did this film especially the sort of volume of my legs there um, and probably like the most noticeable thing because you know my legs were pretty fine before but was the difference between uh, my legs and my midsection so I still do have I mean there's no denying that I think if you know, have a sort of look around the back area that Yeah, although perhaps not hugely smaller, there is definitely a lot more sort of shape around that sort of area. And less sort of <laughs> droopage, I suppose. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good, really. Um, and arms are looking fairly slim, not too much wobble. Um, Shoulders pretty good, that sort of tone and sort of across a bit dark, but across this area here, I'm sort of getting some definition. I think perhaps even like in my face, you can see it a bit more. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's kind of how it's looking. Um, what I do really need to do is actually make some time to edit this stuff and perhaps do a before and after shot well actually because it's a 60 day keto diet challenge thing um i'll post the photos when it's all done um that i took before and after and um, that i'll be sending off the keto diet challenge and do something like that so that you can actually see and i'll just do all my measurements and stuff and yeah it'll be interesting if like there's not really any change with that to just see what the diet and exercise combination has done um, but certainly in terms of how I'm feeling much much better uh, I think you can see as well my I do get little blips with my skin um, because um, the one thing that hasn't really balanced uh, is my female hormones like um, I've mentioned before about uh, the menstrual cycle um, for me um, yeah not great and still not great uh so yeah i get little blips from my skin but otherwise it's quite clear um i've been taking some supplements as well to help with hair um i still have these sort of weird bits that i thought perhaps if i was supplementing and eating really healthy perhaps my hair might just sort itself out but I think that's probably just my hair. My hair's pretty thick in pretty good condition. It's, yeah, it's quite fine, but I have a lot of it. And I think the condition of it is a lot better now than it has been for a long time. So, yeah, I suppose really that's the update at the moment in terms of following a keto lifestyle incorporating um incorporating <laughs> that's another word incorporating heavy weights weight training so um i quit my gym because uh i started working four days a week and want to do the horse riding the only times i was going to get to the gym is when it was horrendously busy and that just makes it stressful for me and half the point of going to the gym is that it's a de-stressor so I've decided to do it from home um, I can get some I'm in the process of sorting out getting some equipment from my uh, in-laws 
um, we just need to sort that out. I've got some resistance bands and you know there's plenty of calisthenics things I can do. I'm having my personal training session uh, once a week again starting this Friday. There's been a few Fridays where I've not been available to do it but I've been keeping up like I say with other exercises. I've incorporated a lot more cardio into it um, and I know people have strong opinions about all oh, you know cardio and weight loss I'm not doing it for weight loss I'm doing it for fitness um horse riding is my passion and I've been really into horse riding and, and love horses in that since um, before I could walk um and as I've got the opportunity to get back into that again what I've noticed is that um because my fitness levels aren't what they were when I was 14 um especially in terms of stamina I find it very hard to do certain things that I used to be able to do it's not because um I, I can't remember or you know the the muscle memory is there and they're just you know the instinct is there but the muscle power strength stamina especially is not so I'm doing an all-round fitness regime with a goal to get better at horse riding really um, as well as really pushing those strength gains and things like that. Um, I suppose I'm kind of hoping that eventually um, my muscle gains and things like that, my, my metabolism will sort itself out um, and that will be that and it will just kind of all fall into place and I'll get slimmer and just look a lot better, which I think I'm starting to look better already, uh, although there's a long way to go still. So, yeah, what I have noticed is um, I've been tracking my calories, my fitness power, I've been tracking my macros, and what I've noticed is I seem to sit really well at about 15% carbohydrate, which is higher than a traditional ketogenic diet. It should be around 5%, 10% maximum. Um, I was just kind of ending up feeling a bit unwell um yeah that low constantly just wasn't really working for me um also I was finding it really hard to eat that way because um I think it's really important to have vegetables um when I was like doing the meat fast and the fat fast and there's no vegetables then that doesn't make me feel very well and I kind of believe coming from my background as a biochemist actually the carbohydrates in ve vegetables you've got so much fiber and nutrients in there that i don't really think you need to worry too much about carbohydrates in um like cruciferous vegetables for example above ground vegetables i think yes um below ground vegetables have a lot of uh, starch in them which yeah you know they're higher in carbohydrates definitely but I think above ground vegetables especially green vegetables I don't personally think there's too much to worry about but um you know I'm still in a learning process there um so fat's been around 60 percent and then the rest protein I have been eating quite high protein again I just find that my body responds really well to eating higher in protein um I have noticed as well that um, with ketosis, um, that very much depends on my sleep. So uh, if I have a lion, <laughs> I'm in ketosis. If I don't have a lion um, and I've got work and that means I don't really sleep because I have sleeping issues, as I've said before, uh, I'm out of ketosis. I think that personally that's to do with cortisol, stress levels. Uh, if I'm not sleeping, then, you know, that adrenaline's pumping and... I probably do have a bit more caffeine um, on those days as well. That probably overall wasn't helping. But yeah, definitely the ketosis thing for me is related to sleep. So that's something quite interesting that, you know, people might not have thought of and be wondering why am I not in ketosis on this day but the next day I'm whatever and perhaps that's something to do with it. Um, so just because this is like an overall update, just moving away from like the whole diet, exercise, health focus for a moment. I've also been trying a couple of different therapies. Um, one's called EFT therapy and it's based on acupressure. So tapping your points, um, 
So I'm just showing you a couple there. And you tap and talk through um, whatever it is that's bothering you. Uh, my end goal is anxiety, like with driving, but um, every therapist I've seen has said, well, I don't, by the sounds of it, the driving isn't really the problem. You can drive pretty well, which is true. Um, I just don't believe it myself, but I know it. So there's a contradiction there, and that's when they're like, actually, there's more to this. Um, it's to do with self-esteem, self-belief, self-confidence, um, fear of failure and, and all sorts of other things. So I've been doing EFT therapy um, and I've also done a bit of kind of desensitization therapy myself to do with driving. Um, both of those, um, yeah, I think they are making a difference. I'm quite sceptical and a bit reluctant, you know, I... I really enjoy doing um, meditations, mindfulness, things like that. But again, I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed miracles. I think perhaps I'm expecting miracles ha to happen straight away. But if I look back and I think collectively, since I've started these therapies, since I've started this particular way of eating, and my ex pro. Um, exercise program all those things those different therapies because that's what they are if I look back to where I was six months ago a year ago 18 months ago two years ago you know I have come such a long way in that healing process that healing journey you know the fact that I'm able to commit and do all that I'm doing and still feel pretty good about it is quite amazing um I just think I'm impatient and perhaps I'm expecting things to go a lot faster than they realistically ever are going to. But the fact that things are moving is amazing. Um, so that's really where I am at the moment. Um, just learning to be a bit more patient with myself. Have a bit more kindness and compassion for myself I'm gonna stick with what I'm doing um one issue that I do have that needs to be addressed is I need to have a chat with my other half about uh having a bit more space and independence in terms of sometimes I want to go to bed to try and go to sleep but he doesn't need as much rest as I do and when he does go to bed he's out so he doesn't always respect that actually like if I want to go to bed at 10 and be left alone, um, and just left to get on and sleep, um, so I'll have a chat with him about that, and actually it's a lot easier now, we've got a new bed, um, a six foot bed, new mattress, it's great, because I've got all the space I need to toss about and not sleep when I'm not sleeping kind of thing, um, so that's really helped, uh, the other thing I just need to, I think, be a bit firmer about, saying to my other half and um the um lady that we live with our lodger um actually i just want to make my own food tonight because i've got all these restrictions or if they serve me up a load of vegetables cooked in sauce or you know things that are quite carbohydrate to just say i'm really sorry but i'm gonna have to have only a tiny amount of that and pile on a lot more meat and fat sources really protein and fat sources um and just accept that perhaps they might be a little bit offended or annoyed or it might make things a little bit more awkward but that's you know i've got to prioritize my health and well-being uh so on that note uh thank you very much for watching i will at some point get round to editing these videos and you know um that kind of thing hopefully i'll have a bit more time to make videos a bit more regularly um thanks very much for your time until next time bye bye